You got to get down with the sound. You power soul. The funk's going around. Okay, welcome back to a door cream videos. Today we're gonna break away from the um, my fandom series. And we're gonna talk about an important album called Exodus. I could kind of add this to the whole um, gold experience thing I've done, but basically, apart from Get Wild and Hallucination, I didn't know any of this album in 1995. I discovered it mainly in the 2000s. I want to talk about that because it's actually gone from being an album I barely listened to to one of my favourite albums. I think it's absolutely baffling. Okay, we're just going to do some facts talking about it first before we go into the tracks. Um, this is going to be quite quick because it's quite a short album. Okay, basically what you're looking at is Exodus. Exodus was the second album credited to the New Power Generation. Basically there are four New Power Generation albums, or one of them wouldn't really be an album. First was of course Gold Nigger, which was Tony M that came out in early 93. Um, and that was basically a vehicle for Tony M. This one is more a vehicle for Sonny Thompson, who's the bassist of the New Power Generation. Um, well, the first bassist, anyway. But um, And this came out on the 27th of March, 1995, so basically between the Come and the Gold Experience, and just around the same time as Purple Medley. Okay, the other thing I'll tell you about MPG Exodus is that this album did not come out under Warner Brothers. It came out under MPG Records. It was released independently. It was only released in three countries. The UK, Australia, and get this, Taiwan. Okay, it actually did fairly well in the UK, getting to number 11 on their charts and only spending three weeks, but still. Um, the album had three singles that were released from it. Um, unlike the Gold Experience, which was mostly recorded back in 1993, this was recorded in two major phases, May 1994 and um, December to 94 to January 95. Um, another thing about Exodus 2 is basically um, there's no prints on this album under the name Prince, and there's no The Artist Will Me Nine's prints or symbols, so basically Warner's did not have a patch on it. Prince appears on the album in two guises. One is Tora Tora, who's basically a performer in vocals and playing instruments, and also as a producer under the um, pseudonym New Power Generation. Also other co-producers include Ricky Peterson and Kirky J, but... So you've got two New Power Generations, the New Power Generation, which is basically Tora Tora, Sonny, Michael B, Mighty does a lot of voiceover segues, you've got the MPG Hornheads, and also you've got Morris Hayes and Purple X on the keys. And Purple X, I believe, is also playing some guitar. But anyway, um, so that's basically the line of the MPG. And apparently even um, E. Levi, who was nearly on his way out at the time in 94, managed Paisley Park and then disappeared at the end of that year, um, was actually doing some shouts during the song as well. So basically you've got that MPG, and then you've got Prince as MPG being the producer. So I'm thinking another um, episode a while ago, I talked about how Prince was calling himself Prince Symbol, Taff Cap, um, Minneapolis, New Power Generation, and Tora Tora. This is where all these personalities come together. Okay, so basically we've got the three singles. Um, first single came out, as you know, was um, Get Wild. Get Wild was... ...released in um, March of 1995, about a week before the um, album. Um, there were two versions of Get Wild that were released. The first version was just a basic single. That just basically had Get Wild, Hallucination Rain, and a version of Most Beautiful Girl called Beautiful Girl. But there was also like a six song um, maxi CD release which had several mixes of the song Get Wild, but also included, um, again, um, In the House Club mix, um, Kirky J's um, Gold mix, and just a Money Maker mix, all these mixes basically. Um, the song got to number 19 in Britain, it didn't really hit the charts anywhere else, and it was also tied in with a, some really forgotten 90s movie called Preta, Preta Manja. I've never even heard of it. I mean, sorry, Preta Porta. Some model nonsense, I guess. Okay, so this is a rap from the album. This is so cool. This is psychedelic artwork. Okay, second single was The Good Life. The Good Life was released in August of 1995. Now, The Good Life 2, again, you also had the basic single, which had... Um, Get Wild as a B-side, but it wasn't the standard Get Wild, it was um, the Money Maker remix, okay, and also again there was a maxi version which included um, five remixes of um, Get of um, The Good Life and also a chant known as Free the Music, which again is about the whole Tora Tora Slave thing. Okay, third single which came out only in um, a Taiwan was Count the Days, and Count the Days was added but that was a really weird way how that single came out. As you know, Count the Days is a song that uses the motherfucker word a lot. The version that came out on the single was an edited version where the word motherfucker had been edited out quite a lot. Known as a clean edit. And the only way you could get the rude version was actually by buying the maxi single. 
And again, um, New Power Soul was New Power Day was the B side, which is basically you know it's quite a type of danceable cut. Okay, let's get into the album. Basically, um, this album, as you can see, the artwork is really eclectic. Um, first of all, I think Prince was again, as you know, he was angry of Warner Brothers at the time, so it was altruistic in one way. He wanted to showcase the new power generation. I mean, maybe Sony was agitating for one, but on the Peach and Black interview, he wanted to cut an album on Morris Hayes. A comedy album and Morris Hayes said hell no basically see where you got the members is I think that's um Sony yeah I think that's um Morris's sunglasses there and I think of course you know this is um you can see Mighty basically in several places she's actually referred to as Janelle album that's um Purple Axe and of course Mighty in front of her and if you take a look here look at this spooky picture right here this thing in red this is the famous Torah Torah the other thing about the publicity behind this when I mean, Prince actually played the song Get Wild on a British show called The White Room was that Prince appeared fully in this red veil and you did not see his face basically. He was also pissed off with Warners because all the music Warners was putting out at the time was actually under the name Prince. If you look at your copies of Come and Chaos and Disorder and the Gold Experience they say Prince and Prince was not referring to himself by that name at the time. He was basically the artist formerly known as Prince or the symbol. Okay so we've discussed that now um, the music on this album is another thing. Okay, basically um, what you've got is you've got four major recordings. Okay, in May 94, the following tracks were cut at Paisley Park. Get Wild, New Power Soul, Exodus Has Begun, Hallucination Rain, and some songs that didn't make the cut, including Slave to the System, Count the, Count the Days, Did, Takes Free, and most of the segs were added. Okay, November 94, okay, um, a new songs called Mad and Funky Design were added. None of them ended up. Um, Acknowledge Me was added. Again, I thought that was Gold Experience, but it was actually, this is actually later than Gold Experience. Acknowledge Me, as you know, ended up on Crystal Ball. Um, Superhero, which I think is another um, release bootleg. Um, Out of Space, Love They Will Be Done, obviously a new version of that. Um, funky. Um, Proud Mary, which is interesting. I mean, Prince was doing these um, old songs, like, you know, um, like for Gold Experience, he did Angie, for instance. Okay, and of course, Somebody, Somebody, which is, you know, is a famous romantic cut of Emancipation, great song. Okay, and then finally, also added to the album were The Good Life, Big Fun, Return of the Bump, of the Bump Squad, and Cherry Cherry. Okay, so that was all 95. Basically, Prince said the album was in the can on the 5th of January 95, so it was only 20 days, I mean, two and a half months before it came out. Okay, now, um, he hardly ever played the song, any of the songs at all. He played a couple of the songs on the Ultimate Live Experience tour. He was mainly playing stuff from the Gold Experience and Come On that tour. He refused to play any hits. I mean, he was saying something like, long ago, you expect to come to get your purple rain on, you come to the wrong place. I think he was deliberately just playing cymbal music because he wanted to divorce himself from the whole Prince thing for a while. Um, basically, but what he did do at these shows, though, was he was actively selling the album, and that's how a lot of people got their copies of, copies of it. Of course, I know I've been flashing this in front of your face. Um, this is actually a very well-made copy done by the Purple Poetess from a little while ago. So you see some bits of paper glued together. And as for my Exodus CD, y'all ready to laugh? Yeah. It's basically just the standard dub. But anyway, I've still got Exodus. You see, that's the back cover, by the way, as you can see. No tracks listing, but just a great one. Now, I'm going to review the songs, okay? First of all, I know there's... It's 21 tracks, but actually if you take out all the segues, and not all of them are like 10 second things, you've got 9 actual songs on this album. The album starts off with a segue, and it's, again, Prince, Torah Torah, whatever you want to call them, for the sake of clarity and convenience, I'm just going to refer to anything done by Torah Torah, New Power Generation, and Symbol as Prince, basically. Um, it's calling line, he sounds naive, and he's going, hello? No, we're not that record company. That's um, mighty, and he goes, oh, it's Prince trying to get on Simon with Paisley Park to put out his music and then basically she tells him to go back and um, learn about how to keep the rights to his music and everything else. It's a big protest. Then that goes into the first proper song which is Get Wild. It goes, ah, oh, Get Wild. Which as you know, Get Wild is a great party song, you know. And I actually feel Get Wild doesn't quite fit with the rest of Exodus, but it's a great song. I'm not going to complain about it. It's a wonderful song. Okay, and then Get Wild leads, we start off with the silly segues. First of all, you've got them walking into a club going, hey, there's a lot of ladies here today. And then they go into a club and you can hear Dream Factory from Crystal Ball playing and the guys start trash the place going, what's this shit, I won't play this music. You know, and it's quite funny. And then you've got um, the next song it comes into is New Power Soul, which is a real jazzy cut. It's a dun 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 new power soul. Dun 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 dun. And then after that there's some more segues. Um, 
Oh, I'm trying to remember what happens in these circuits. A lot of them, it's just it's just basically they're talking about how they're bad motherfuckers and they've got these bitches and like you know, someone's wrong, Sonny, but now he's got these beautiful girls. They're going to become friends again. And then after all this nonsense, we finally go into three good songs in a row. The first song, of course, as you know, is Count the Days. Count the Days is actually about Prince leaving his record company. And even though some people might listen to it and interpret it as some sort of gangster rap thing about, you know, about blowing motherfuckers away and everything else, it's actually about the motherfucker he's blowing away is Warner Brothers, pretty much. And actually the singing in it, even though there's a lot of swearing, the singing in Count the Days is bloody incredible. It's a real sort of deep, gospel black melisma type people say who counted it i count the days yeah here's a church here's a steeple here's a motherfucker that i gotta blow away and you can actually besides sunny and all the um brothers singing you can hear prince at least in two tracks prince is singing in a deeper voice but if you listen really deep in the mix you can hear prince singing in falsetto you can hear like in the background Ooh, I count the days. it's really really good it's a totally recommended song then the next song is the good life and the good life is a real upbeat party it's not a party song it's just a real upbeat positive empowering songs but worked all day at what is it at work you is where you'll see this brother it's like my face seems to freeze over when I'm trying to sing these lyrics but it's really positive Again, you've got Prince's harmony in the background going, the good life, that one day I'm going to be living. Fantasy never hurt nobody, whatever chance you're given. It's basically about working hard, empowering, and maybe your dreams are going to come true. The good life is a very, very positive song. And then that leads into Cherry, Cherry again. Excellent piece of harmony singing with Sonny and Prince doing the vocals. And Cherry Cherry is about a beautiful girl he meets in the schoolyard, but she's very depressing. She meets up with a really bad guy and then she ends up dying. It's got quite a sad feel to it though, but again, the singing in those three songs, it's just wonderful. It's like Count the Days. I mean, I know most people remember it for the word motherfucker, but you can't dispute the stuff. This is good stuff. And then we've got some more silly skits. I mean, I can't remember half of them, but one of the really silly ones is Prince is doing like the sort of Vito Corleone voice. It's called Mashed Potato Girl, and he's like, you know, I took this girl out, and I was eating with her, and she's so greedy, so I threw the potatoes in the face, you know? And it's Prince doing this voice. It's hilarious, and he's talking over. And then there's a part where um, Sonny is watching TV, and he's with his girlfriend, and there's this news guy in the background, and they're having sex, and he gets angry and pissed off with the TV, so he shoots it. He goes, baby, baby, what's wrong with you? You're getting so angry, and he's like, I need a hug, you know? And then it goes into the next song, which is New is actually um, Big Fun. And Big Fun is, it's not bad, it's sort of like a real party dance song. It's pretty good. You know, it's sort of dancing and fun. You've got the sort of the loop to um, New Power Soul in the background. And then you've got another cool song, which is called Return of the Bump Squad, and that's a badass party jam, basically. Basically, the Bump Squad are a group of like, you know, sort of dancing hoodlums that are going to come along and kick your ass. And again, you've got Prince doing some real bombastic rapping along with Sonny. And I suspect there's another African-American male singing in the song, so I have a suggestion that it might be Morris Hayes. I could be wrong. Um, and um, again, hilarious. And then there's another hilarious skit comes on. He's talking about how, you know, he went to this girl called Janelle and made a mess in her house. For those of you, as you know, Janelle is um, Mighty's real name. Her name was actually Mighty Janelle Garcia. So it's quite funny. And then we head into a new skit, which is called, um, you hear um, this guy go, Give me some soup, bitch. Get my soup, bitch. And then you hear him like go, oh, man, this soup tastes funny. It tastes weird, man. And that heads into this jam called Hallucination Rain. And most people write the jam Hallucination Rain off the dance. That's very good because they say it sounds like a cut price parliament to me. It's not. That's what Matt Fawn said. It's not parliament to me. It sounds more like something that Funkadelic would do. It sounds a bit like you've got this maggot brain type guitar solo running for it. And I actually really like it. It's got, I mean, the guitar playing in the song. Whoever's playing that guitar, I suspect it's either Prince or um, Purple X. They are fucking shredding that guitar in that song. And not just that. The other thing you hear in that song going right through is this killer bloody drum track. It's just insane. And you know who the drum track is. It's Sonny. I mean, not Sonny. It's Michael B. Absolutely slaying the drums. I mean, 
even us just to hear him go hallucination rain wow hallucination rain so it actually sounds like they're high like you know obviously this bitch has put some shit in his suit which has made him like completely freak out basically great song you got some more silly skits again and then after the skits you've got the song the x just has begun and i mean it's 10 minutes long but to me it's just not very good it's just basically a loop and a chant basically you know the exodus has begun the bow, the bow. you know it's just sorry but it's just really filler then the finish the album off you got three skits the first one is basically they're like in some sort of like you know black type of red dwarf situation where they're in an mpg spaceship then the last one basically sunny t wakes up and it's like oh man it was all a dream you know and then that sends exodus so there you are that's exodus great album you know, definitely worth getting, you know, I mean, it's definitely out there in the bootleg world. It probably won't be easily commercially available because it did see a very limited release. My guess is that commercially it probably sold less than about 10,000 copies around the world. And that probably most copies of um, Exodus, like this one, are boots. Okay, just before I go, a couple more things. Um, I found this in the vault. This is my original copy of Prince of the Hits. I bought this in 1994 or 5. As you can see, it's one of those ancient old video cassettes. Does everybody remember these things? Back in the olden days, you know? Back when we had steam-powered um, record players and things. And that's really great. So it's got a list of all the stuff you can buy. Princeton says here you can buy the, the Get Off video collection above the one for Rat. I mean, who the hell were Rat? Were they like some 80s metal group or something? And finally, last thing I want to show you, peace lovers, this is what I've had done. As you can see, nice silver frame. This is the bloody fingerprint I was telling you about. It's really pissing me off, basically. But as you can see, that looks really nice now. Wouldn't you guys agree? You know, it's like, yeah. So there you are. There's Exodus has begun.